volatility will trend down, as do all assets as they grow. Do I think we'll see 500, 600,000? Sure. Bitcoin won't be the same ever again. The floodgates for institutional capital are now open after last week a spot Bitcoin ETF was approved in the United States. But what is the long-term impact of the ETF approval? How will it shape the future of Bitcoin as an asset class? And does it pave the way for the approval of a spot Ethereum ETF? I address these and more questions in my conversation with hedge fund manager Mark Yusko. Before we get started, as always, consider leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. I'm Giovanni, your host, and this is a Cointelegraph interview. You welcome this uh, event saying that the boomers are finally coming to Bitcoin, meaning that now, of course, a lot of um, traditional investors are going to have access to Bitcoin. And in case some boomer is watching our show right now, can you maybe uh, say why should he ha include Bitcoin in their retirement account? You know, I've been talking about my, my hashtag get off zero for a long time, right? I, I coined that phrase, I think back in, in 2015 or 16 and been talking about it ever since. Zero exposure to Bitcoin is the wrong number. Now, I'm not saying you should put 100% of your assets there, but, but zero is the wrong number. Well, why do I say that? Look, Bitcoin is the greatest diversifying asset we've ever seen. And I've lived through all of them, right? This means I'm old. So I've seen, you know, back when times when people only bought bonds in their portfolio, they didn't own stocks because they were too risky. And then they found out that if you add stocks to a bond portfolio, the risk actually goes down because they're uncorrelated. And then you added things like real estate, and hedge funds, and venture capital, and private equity. Every time you add a risky asset to a portfolio that's uncorrelated with the other assets, your portfolio gets more efficient. You get more return per unit of risk. Dr. Markowitz won the Nobel Prize for that. Pretty big deal. Well, Bitcoin, over its 15-year life, is 0.0, .0 correlated to bonds and 0.15 correlated to stocks. It's the least correlated asset of any asset. Stocks and bonds are 0.3 correlated for reference. So when you add it to a portfolio, your return goes up, your risk goes down. It happens to be the best performing asset in 12 of the last 15 years of the 15 years has been around. In fact, BlackRock actually put out a chart today showing that it's been the best performing asset in 12 of its 15 years of existence. So it's got a good return. Therefore, you should own a little bit of it. Now I would like to address uh, the problematic aspect of the, the approval of this spot Bitcoin ETF because um, I was uh, reading uh, uh, an op-ed not long ago who was say that was saying that crypto needed Wall Street in order to reach mass adoption. It couldn't reach that without the help of Wall Street, the help of the institutions, the help of a, fi of a traditional financial instrument uh, like, uh, um, like an ETF. What would you say about it? There's multiple layers here. A couple things. One, owning little b Bitcoin the token. That's important, right? Why is it important? Well, it's important to people who believe in self-sovereignty and self-custody. Okay, but the average person in, in the boomer class who isn't technologically savvy, who hasn't done the work, who doesn't understand why this asset's so important, doesn't understand why triple entry accounting is an important innovation, just isn't going to go there. They're not going to memorize a 24-word seed phrase. They're not going to buy a little ledger and, and hold their own keys. So CFI, this intermediate step, is necessary. It's why companies like Coinbase and Kraken are so valuable. So if we think about that as this is an interim step for longer-term full adoption, it's kind of a cop-out to say, well, you needed Wall Street in order to get mass adoption. It's one piece of adoption. There's still 3 billion people in the world that don't have electricity. So let's work on getting them adoption. Because of the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF, we are going to see some long-term effects on, uh, on Bitcoin. Some people say that Bitcoin 
won't be the same ever again. What they mean is that the spot Bitcoin ETF is going to uh, make the price action of Bitcoin a little less exciting in the sense that uh, it's going to kill the volatility but of crypto. You often uh, say that we, you need to embrace volatility because that's one of the best part of Bitcoin. Some people yeah. say that. Yeah, Giovanni, look, look what I'm wearing today. Embrace volatility. I'm actually wearing the shirt. That's why I wanted to ask you. So are you not concerned that the spot Bitcoin ETF will kill Bitcoin's volatility? Well, it, it certainly will reduce volatility, but that's the nature of growing up. Right? It's the law of large numbers. When, when Bitcoin was very small and basically a science project, I mean, 15 years ago when Hal Finney, 15 years ago yesterday, when Hal Finney you know, did the, you know, the basic tweet uh, running Bitcoin, the price was 0 0.00013 or something like that. I mean, the price was zero. And any movement was incredible volatility, just the law of small numbers. And then volatility was really high, and, and that was great. When it went from a dollar to ten dollars, that was a miracle, right? That was the miracle, the miracle that we got to a real number that people could actually be attracted to and buy, was was the miracle. Whether we go from a thousand dollars to ten thousand, or ten thousand to a hundred thousand, or a hundred thousand to a million, that's not the miracle, right? Because those are smaller percentage increases than that original increase from point oh 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 one cent. To, to $10. And so, yes, volatility will trend down, as do all assets as they grow. That's what we want, right? This, this idea that we, that we, some small horde of people, want to have all the volatility to ourselves, that's not what this was invented for. Right? This was invented to solve a problem, which was dual entry accounting being corruptible, and replace trust with truth, to bust the monopoly of the banking cabal that has been existed, or I shouldn't say cabal, uh, cartel, uh, that's been around for 838 years. And so I, I get it that lower volatility, boring, I can't day trade it as much. So be it. It wasn't invented for day trading. It was invented to solve money. That's what it was, it was invented to allow you and I to exchange value without asking permission. We saw that in the days coming up to the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF, one of the best performing cryptos was ETH. And then even now it's performing pretty well. It seems that a lot of people are already expecting a spot Ethereum ETF to be approved soon. Eric Balchuras, the ETF analyst at Bloomberg, said that there is a 70% probability that a spot Ethereum ETF will be approved by May this year. So what do you think? Would you agree with this uh, sort of expectations? Look, I, I think certainly anything's possible. I think the big challenge is timing. I mean, it took 10 years, 10 years to go from the first application by the Winklevoss twins for an ETF in Bitcoin to approval yesterday. So... Uh, now, Ethereum will stand on the shoulders of giants in the sense that it probably won't take 10 years. But I think the big challenge is going to be, look, the SEC didn't want to approve this. You know, it was clear in, in the chairman's statement that, you know, we're, in, we're approving the ETFs, but we're not approving or endorsing Bitcoin. Not that Bitcoin really wants or needs his approval. But... Uh, they have clearly said in the past that Bitcoin is not a security. At one point, they said Ethereum was not a security, but then they kind of backed away from that. They pretty much have said anything else is a security. So probably not going to have ETFs in those anytime soon. I would say it's less than 70% chance. I'd probably say less than 50-50. Um, I think it'll just come down to are the people that run the firms that manage these assets willing to do the hard work to make it happen. So we'll see how that goes. I was looking at our last conversation six months ago when you were actually predicting the approval of the Spot Bitcoin ETF coming sometimes in Q3, Q4, 2020, 
the three, so you were pretty very close. You said that the Bitcoin fair value was around 55,000 and you were saying that uh, Bitcoin would reach its fair value more or less when we're going to see the halving and then we're going to have this big upside move. Uh, you were saying that it would reach about uh, $150,000. That, uh, that was your prediction for like the top of this cycle. Would you correct this uh, prediction of yours that you made six months ago right now? What would you correct or adjust? No, no, I'll double, I'll double up on it in the sense that uh, I still think fair value of the network today is somewhere in the, the low 50s and we're going to creep toward that number um, by the halving. Now, I think that gets accelerated by the approval of the ETF. Now, you know, we're going to have some nonsense of the future selling and some front running and day trading. And so there'll be some volatility. But uh, I think between now and, and the halving, we definitely get uh, into the 50s. And you know whether we get to the all-time high, I don't know. But on the halving, what happens is the, the fair value basically has to adjust upwards or otherwise the miners don't make enough to stay in business. And what we've seen in every pass halving is the fair value basically double. So that would take us from 50 to 100 to use round numbers. And then you get into crypto fall, which starts in June. And that year following the halving you get the FOMO and the momentum and the leverage and the craziness. I think that's going to be less this time, right? Normally it's about 2.3, 2.5 times fair value. So if fair value is 100, that would take us to 230, 250. I don't think we get there, right? I think it's probably a one and a half ish move this time because there won't be as much uh, liquidity and won't be as much leverage. Now, is that too conservative? Probably, you know, Kathy Wood on this morning saying, oh, no, it'll be 600000 Like, of course she's going to say that. She's trying to sell her product. Um, but I actually think she probably believes, at least a little bit, that that's possible. Do I think we'll see five hundred, six hundred thousand? 600000 Sure. By the end of this year? By the end of next year? Probably not. But um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll see, you know, six-digit Bitcoin in 2024. And uh, the rest of the year will be a lot of fun. Okay, so you pretty much stick to your previous view on this. And uh, yeah, let's see how it's going to play out. Uh, let's talk again in uh, six months as usual. It's always a pleasure to have you on our show, uh, Mark. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Giovanni. And uh, best to you and all the viewers. And we'll talk soon.